All right, tubes and tubettes. We're working on the 302. We're gonna start kind of putting this together. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna get the bearings in and get the crank set in and uh, torque down and make sure it rotates nicely and then flip her over. We're gonna throw some pistons in it. Um, for those of you just tuning in, this 302 uh, lost a freeze plug. Uh, one of these behind the motor mount and I overheated it and seized up the engine and it uh, yeah it was just not good all around um, so I took this to the machine shop and had them bore it uh, 30 over uh, get me some new pistons to go with it they did all the machine work line bore just cleaned it up really nice um, now it's back here for me to uh, put together and build this engine so we can get this truck going again um, I got the cylinder heads on the workbench. Um, they were completely redone. They got brand new valves, new springs, new retainers, new hardened seats, all that fun stuff. Um, they were untouched and they said they needed a lot of work. So I'm like, just go ahead and do the whole cylinder head. Just bring it back to uh, stock or slightly better to, than stock. I'm not doing anything super crazy on this build. Um, this engine was pretty peppy uh, with the carburetor I had on it beforehand. Um, so my goal is just to make this a reliable runner, make, I don't know, between two and 300 horsepower, I'd be happy with that. I just ordered 90% of what I think I need to put, get this engine together and I'll have that here in a few days. Um, I got a camshaft, I've got the uh, double roller timing kit, I got 30 over cylinder head gaskets, um, I've got lifters, and then everything else. Um, I got under the table we're going to reuse on this. Um, so that was another uh, $900 spent there. And yeah. Yeah, we need to get these caps off. And then, uh, yeah. Let's take a picture of this so I remember. Yeah, let's see, what size were these? Can it be the same size that I was using to put the engine stand together? Nope. Okay. Oh, and I had the crankshaft ground too. That all, everything is just where it needs to be. And I've got three vehicles to drive, so this wasn't one of those things where it had to be done like right now. Um, okay, one thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to take some Scotch Brite and just clean the bearing surfaces here up. I had a piece of Scotch Brite. Spray some kind of comment generator lubricant. On here. A little bit of surface rust never hurt anybody. I got brand new cameras. This is going to be a brand new engine. All said and done. Um, we need main bearings. Main bearings, where'd you go? We have one bearing spot here that takes the, this style bearing. And we have to make sure that we put the slotted one where the oil holes are or else we're gonna have we're gonna have a problem. This is fun. This will be my third engine build. I did a Toyota 5SFE for my neighbor. And then we did the 4BT Cummins. And now we're doing the 302. These have some Cosmoline or something on them. They're a little sticky, so I might uh, get a rag and some brake clean and clean that off. All right, we have a notch. A little notch, it's gonna fit into this notch.
I need something soft to tap that in with. Yeah, there we go. Nice fit. So yeah, our oil passageway can feed this groove, and then the other one that doesn't have a hole or a groove goes on the bottom. Alright, so all the ones with uh, grooves need to go into these little, little deals there. Doesn't look like, looks like they're all grooved actually. Okay, so all of these are grooved, so. So I'm about three grand into this uh, project. And yeah, I probably could have gone to the junkyard, gotten a 302, or gone on Marketplace and picked up a cheap engine that probably isn't any good and probably saved some money. But I've been having really bad luck doing that stuff, so. And plus, I like building engines. Or at least, uh, I'm still learning, so I like, I like this. This is fun. Fun for me. Uh, do we have a bigger bearing? No, that's where a seal goes. They're all the same. That's good, that's good. Make sure there's no dead bris. Or contaminants. And then we're gonna take some lube and plate. Lube plate. Lube plate. And we're gonna just schmoo on some stuff here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to get. I guess I can make it if I pack up my old distributor, which I think I have my old distributor. If I do, we're going to make a uh, oil pump priming tool out of that. All right, I think we're ready for a crankshaft, aren't we? Nice, they put a repair sleeve on this. All right. In we go. It's important to not turn this when you uh, uh, don't have the caps so on, spin the bearings. And it's important we don't have any debris in between our caps. Now uh, what I am going to do here, I'll take some lubricate, lubricate, and we'll just put a little bit on there like that. I need to go get my torque wrench too. Okay. <clears throat> we got the arrows in the right direction. Okay, next. Definitely don't want to 
mix these caps up now and mess up our machine work. Next, this one gets the big bearing, which I have already cleaned off. take my little hammer here and tap her in. So freaking sweet. Oh, we need a lubricate. Lubricate. We need assembly lube on our uh, thrust area here. These will orient themselves. <clears throat> now this bearing cap, you gotta really try to get this one wrong. bearing. Make sure we're clean. Alright, I'm going to run these in with the impact just lightly and starting from the center and I'm just going to work my way out. Alright, now let's see if our crank turns. Oh! <laughs> That is like butter. That feels really good. Nice. I like that a lot. Of course, we still got to torque it down, but we're pretty much there. We got just a little bit of end play there. I think that's good. All right. According to Summit Racing, 302 main cap bolts are 60 and 70 foot pounds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 60, get everything settled in, rotate the crank, and then we'll go to 70, rotate the crank, make sure it's nice and smooth still. And then I'm just going to go, boop, 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 boop. I'm sure there's an actual sequence to this, but hey. Sure, what we're doing is better than it was <laughs> better than it was when it was built at the factory. <laughs> Click. Sixty. Still feels good. Yep. 60 still feels good. Yep. Still feels really good. Did we already get this one? Yeah, we did. We got this one at the end. Yep. Yep. Still feels really good. Get these Yep. Nice. That feels really, really good. All right, let's go 70. All right. Yeah, feels good. Well, for now, we're done here because we have 
no oil pump yet. I still gotta clean up the pickup tube and the oil pan. Um, I don't even have an oil pan gasket. Um, I have thought about putting the oil pan on as is, so that way we can uh, kind of cover cover this up. Um, and I think I want to paint it. Two of you suggested black paint, and I just happen to have two cans of black engine paint. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, um, grab that oil pan. Actually, it's dirty. I don't even want to put it on there. I think I'll just cover up the cylinders area, cylinder areas, and then we'll, we'll, we'll paint her. I think I'm gonna go get some dinner. I'm, I'm hungry. I might come back to this at a later part in this video. Yeah, we got the crank in, so it's not gonna fall out. Nice. Um. Now what I want to do, I actually want to start putting pistons in this thing, but we need to figure out our ring gap or what our rings are um, going to look like here. I think the spec on this uh, for a 30 over is 18 to 20 thousandths. Um, I think I'm going to go, and I was reading a couple of different things. Um, if you want to do turbo or, or nitrous, you want to run a, like a 20 thousandths ring gap. Or maybe a scotch more. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just loosely based off some information from some random person on a Mustang forum at, and back in 2006. I'm going to do what they suggested and run uh, 18 thousandths on the top ring and then uh, 20 on the secondary ring uh, so that way uh, there's no uh, pressure buildup in between the uh, those two rings um, science and stuff but I really want to try and get this as as tight as possible and that possible part is the minimum stack so, let's take a look here. We got our ring kit here. I'll open this right up. So we got top groove. Third groove, these are going to be the oil rings. Oh, that's the oil ring. That's the third groove. There's the second. So these are gonna be oil rings. And then we got, yeah, first and second. I'm gonna read this real quick like, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so far, the information that I've been given on that little pamphlet in the uh, piston ring box is do not spiral the rings on you want to use a piston ring expander so that's what we're going to use and I have a uh, ring filer. Oh well this is already this is already open here. So I think we should have eight of these. One, two, three. Got four and four. It's like one ring. Man, this engine is just gonna run so good. Put this in four cylinder mode here. Yep, it sounds just like that. Cool. That's so nice seeing this crankshaft in there. Everything's all new. 
well, it looks new. That's what I'm excited about. Anyways, uh, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, they didn't take any material over here, they just out, cleaned it right off and then that's it. Would have been kind of nice if they decked it, but that's alright. Um, let's see, crystal main ring. So what I want to do is get a piston ring in here. Let's see what our gap is here. Let's get a piston. What do we got? Number five. One number four. Here's number five. Oh, look at this. Brand spanking new piston. That is a tight ring gap. <laughs> Looks pretty tight. Let's get our uh, find our feeler gauge. We got 21. I don't know where my. We'll do 19. I don't know where my 20 is. Okay, 19. Nineteen does not fit. Or just barely. Oh, nineteen fits. Nineteen fits perfectly in there. Um, we don't have to file that one at all. And it looks like these can go any which way. Um, usually on these you'll see like either here or here you'll see a dot or a marking that says top. These can go which way? Um, so this ring, our number five is ready to go. Let's look at our second groove. I'm just gonna do one piston, show you guys, and then I'm gonna do all eight of these off camera. Okay, now this ring, the second groove, I don't know how well you can see that. This is top. All right, if this one comes in at 19, I'll be happy. Yeah, there is no gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little ring filer here. I'll set the ring right here. And I'll rotate this backwards. It'll take a little bit off. Let's get that to, uh, let's get that to where we can put a feeler gauge in there. I'll, uh, I'll grind that down. Yeah, that gap looks a little bit bigger now. What do I do with the feeling gauge? Also here.
I can just barely get a uh, 19 in there. Let's take her a tiny bit more and we'll call it. Just make sure there's no burrs on it. Definitely getting easier to put in. Yeah, just a little snug, but 19 fits in there. Okay, now the oil rings, I don't believe we touched those. I could be totally wrong. Well, let's open it up. Okay, I had to read the directions a little bit. Actually, they didn't even really tell me a whole lot. Other than the gap for the spring here needs to, um, the point needs to face up. And then this has to go in first because on the ends, these have a little groove and the spacers go in here and lock this in. Cool. Kind of putting this on the unorthodox way. Nice. I get the gaps. I can actually probably orient this. We have a gap here, a gap here. You want to keep the gaps away from the skirt here and you want to keep them out of the wrist pin area. So I always do a gap here, a gap here, a gap here. Go. Cool. You know what I don't like about these pliers is that they uh, don't expand to the way I'd like them to. I hope I have a big enough piston ring compressor. I even do something like that. Nice. Put a gap here. We'll do a gap right there, and then a gap. Maybe we'll do a gap right here. That should be good. I'm gonna go find my piston ring compressor. Well, first I gotta break these free. Go get at the piston ring compressor. Hopefully, it's the right size. We'll s squeeze this down. Well, I couldn't find the little Allen, not Allen, but a little elbow deal for this. But apparently, a quarter inch drive fits perfectly. And this will work on this. This thing can expand pretty large. Um, we use that on the Cummins. I just put a little bit of electrical tape on the ends here so we don't bump into our deal. 
Get some liver freight, liver freight. Just tighten this thing up. Spray that with some. See if we can't get that to drop in nicely. Put some oil in there. It goes on like that. Some shim sh shmoo. Five and a number five. Oh, yeah. These are torque, I think, to about 25, 25 to 30 foot pounds. I'll look at the spec and just make sure we get it, get it somewhat spot on. I'll use the uh, impact automatic. Clicks. Oh yeah. Feeling good. Sweet. All right, tubes. I am gonna work on seven more cylinders and I'll bring you back when we got a rotating assembly. All right, I got all eight power pumpers in. They are gapped to about 19 thousandths. At least the first two, the oil rings, um, I don't believe we touched those. I need to go grab my uh, torque wrench. We're gonna go ahead and get these rods torqued. We've already got the mains torqued. We're going to torque the rods now. And then um, we're done with the rotating assembly. It's just a matter of waiting for my other stuff to get here. And I'm getting it from Summit Racing here. Uh, let's see. Connecting rod bolts. For the Boss 302, it's 40 to 45. Uh, they're saying 22 to 25 standard, so let's go, let's just go right to 25, huh? So that's 20, 
25. Let's see where we're at. Are you ready? That one was already there. That was not. Oh, I just stepped in gear oil. Son of a bitch. I lubed up all the cylinders with gear oil on top of the other stuff I've been putting in. Okay, that's 25. Twenty-five. And what I'll do is after I torque them, I'm going to rotate it once, check them again, and then, you know, that should be almost she wrote. And the idea of this is just to make sure it didn't tighten up or, you know, I want to make sure not having any issues. That's torqued. That's torqued. 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 tension on this. Cool. I am done for the day twos. That's awesome, isn't it? I'm glad I went this route um, just knowing that this is going to be a fresh, fresh engine. Um, really makes me feel great. Look at that. Nice. Cool. And I like to rotate that around and make sure we don't have any scratches. I've seen this a little bit. That's Oh, that's that was there. That was from when they uh, checked it with their uh, little bore gauge thing. Cool. Yep, it's all gonna have to break in. So um, I have a huge order of some racing parts, and we're going to uh, put in our camshaft, our new lifters. Um, we're gonna get the uh, oil pan cleaned up, painted, new oil pump in, pickup tube in, cleaned of course, and uh, get that oil pan in. And I've got a one-piece oil pan gasket on the way, uh, uh, Felpro. Same as the valve cover gaskets that I use on here. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll be able to get this thing mostly put together. The only thing I don't know. Um, I'm probably going to have to get new push rods be, and we may have to get new rocker assemblies. So I'm not, that's going to stop us from actually getting the engine back in the truck and running it. But um, yeah, that's it for tonight. I'm done. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go play now.